Hello again, it's Priscilla Batel in Spring Hill, Florida. That expression is there at Studio Gallery with a couple of shovels I might use to put some paint in and then pour onto my canvas. An OXO omelet turning, flip and fold spatula, a reservoir, and a 12 by 24 inch canvas. That I have a plan to see how fast that I... Let's just see how fast I can make escape. That's some white paint. In my case, it's Artist Loft. I don't really think it matters to me how far down that goes, because the further down it goes, the more I am covered for a wet layer of paint that will help spread other paint. I do want a little bit across the top, but I'm afraid if I spread it too thin, it will just dry. So that's probably a moot point, although that is the way I spread my paint on the edges of my canvas. Now that's white, but I have Anita's white metallic, which I often use as a conveyance or a method of sort of diluting my other paints. That can go away, it does not belong. So this time I'm just gonna give myself a bunch of that and then I'm gonna spread the colors that I think I want in my sky in a most random way possible. Trying to assess at the same time whether or not there will be too many. I don't know what this is gonna look like but I'm very curious to find out if this will work. This is my hot orchid that they don't make anymore, but they are making other beautiful colors, more other pinks and purples. I'm gonna put a little bit of, this lilac, I don't know what is, I would have told you, that is a neon from folk art. It's actually matte. The orange is a Hobby Lobby brand, Master's Touch. Just your average whatever where I start. Let's, let's hope, let's, is that enough? That's, I don't know. Let's give me a little bit more on both sides and some in the middle. That looks like more than enough. Maybe it'll be a majorly sky, mostly sky thing. Let me get some of my bottles out of the way. Semi-permanently. So I can actually go on to the next stage in a minute without dumping everything, please, Priscilla. Now I grabbed an edge catcher and then I cut it the long way so I could use it across the top. We'll see how that works right now. Right now I'm just going to tip. Let's start where we start, wherever that happens to be. And it looks like there's a goodly amount of paint on there, which makes me happy. I'm not going to worry about torching at this exact second. I am going to see if I can spread it across the whole canvas. If I leave it a rather abstract sky, that's fine. That's, that's really something I keep wanting to do and resisting. So now I want to flip that around, do the same thing so I cover my other edge. Although I just stuck my hand in this one. Let's let all that go right down there. And if I want to add more colors, I will. So it's a puddle sky, puddle sunset sky. Here comes the paint. And watch it roll. It creates a seal once it hits the edge catcher. You just want a certain amount of pressure that you will figure out pretty rapidly, I would assess, I would expect. All right, so now I'm gonna hit it really quick with the torch just because I see those bubbles. <coughs> and I think I'm gonna throw a little bit more orange in there right now. Because I want some. It's more like a sunset caught in the clouds. So we'll do that one more time. Oh, 
the way across. Maybe that'll help fill in that gap there on the top. And I've got another gap I see that I can actually just take some of this paint right off this edge catcher and I probably will. Oh, somebody's decided to use the bathroom while I'm recording. Thank you so much. Sorry. It's okay. Once upon a time they didn't hear it the last time, so maybe we'll get lucky. All right, guys, I've got this super long edge catcher that I have never tried to use before, and it is, like I said, super long. It may not even be the whole length, but it might be close enough to get... I cut a 16 by 20 on the diagonal. That's what I did. And I'm not creating the kind of seal I'd like to have, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to take my paint that's gone over and just try and fill in where it still needs some. That's pretty. I'm going to grab my edge catcher paint. Just grab a little with my OXO armlet turning flip and fold. Cool. Now if I want to mess around with that, I could probably blow into it. Oh, I see another spot. There we go. I think what I want to do is make sure I don't waste any paint. So I'm going to grab all of the extra paint off of my edge catcher because there's no reason in my mind at all to waste it. It's not like pink is going to turn muddy. And then I can just use it like I used the white in stage one. To fill in the bottom. So I can add some paint on top of it. Let's make sure everything is covered. Find a couple uncovered spots. Gonna stick my finger in them. Any more paint there? Yes, there is. Any residuals make a nice cutting. So if I ever wanted to cut up my edge catchers, and I kind of do, I could do that easily. It looks like a reflection of the sky in wet sand to me every time I do this. Please excuse me. Sometime I ought to just take the cell activator and use what's here. Maybe this is that time. Although it's kind of weird that this is pink and that's orange. So let's make that pink. Or more pink. I think I want to cover my bottom too. And every time I find a little splat of paint that came off something, I can pick it up with my spatula and find some purple. I might throw a horizon line in of something interesting. I gotta catch this before it dries. I'm thinking. I might want to tip that down. My edges are fairly well covered. I might want to put some trees along that horizon line too. I think I'm going to get this out of here. There isn't really very much paint left on it anyway. But there is, I just noticed, on top of my tile. So we'll let the sky dictate what the horizon line looks like, with the exception of I'm going to go over here. How am I going to get all that paint off of there? I want to throw that spatula in the bucket because I have others ready and waiting. 
grab a straw. That's what I wanted to do anyways. Play with the edge of this. All right, I was gonna use a shovel, I know. <coughs> Excuse me. Very stylized sun. Let me uh, grab a basting brush. That was not part of my plan. <clears throat> but there's nothing really, no hard and fast rule about this <clears throat> right now. So it'll be funky. <clears throat> <coughs> All right, I'm gonna grab some Amsterdam black. Actually, this is some really strange stuff. It's very loose. So I'm gonna grab I don't know what happened to it. It may not work. I might have to put something right over the top of it. But for right now, I want to try it. Because I can sort of thing. Not looking really great so far though. I think I'll do... Who knows, I might fail. Come on. I wanted a little blue sky in there and I guess I got it with that purple. put some of that. I'm going to put some of my American Floetrol that has a Minwax wood conditioner added to it and the recipe is below the video into my little dish. some of that off. Oh, I have a splatter. Bummer. I think sort of makes it look a little bit like water now because the reflection That was as close to a mistake as I want to get. So, <coughs> um, let's grab a different card. I like the idea of the reflections. I'm not sure I like what I did with the sun yet, but I'm not sure what if, what, if anything, I can do with that either. I guess we'll find out in a minute. I was trying to do this fast, but I don't think I'm fast enough to call this fast. I 
don't mind the idea of trying out new, new things, including adding some texture with the basting brush, which could turn, still turn back into something swiped with the... All right, so what do I do with that sky? Do I swipe it? Maybe I do. I wasn't happy and I had those dots down below too. That is my airbrush that I should unplug one of these days unless I'm going to use it right quick. All right it's a very orange sky but I don't think I mind. More hit and run with the torch. I've got two minutes to tell you guys. Please give me a thumbs up if you like my finished result, even though it looks like I went at it kind of haphazardly. Which I kind of did. I'm going to touch up my bottom if I find some some paint and show you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a thing. So check under the video for my link tree where you can find Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter links, my Amazon link where you can find my two books. And a whole lot more cool stuff. So this isn't exactly how I thought it was going to turn out, but that's okay because I learn something almost every time about what I might want to do next time. And it's cheerful. So I have over 2200 videos and if you can't find what you're looking for, just ask me. Comments are welcome. Questions are welcome. And uh, they're organized by topic and genre. Thank you for the donations that help keep me painting because you guys are helping keeping me painting. Thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for sharing and watching longer. Uh, thank you for checking on the community board for tomorrow's video. I post seven days a week right now, usually 9.30 a.m. and 10 p.m. Um, what else? Facebook group Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group is for students. There might wind up having some trees in this at some point in time, but I'm not going to do that right now. I love you guys. You inspired the heck out of me. I'm so glad you're here. I will be touching out my edges with colors that are similar to the sides in a moment after you're gone. All right, you guys take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now. This is Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery. See ya. Anon.